If you get thrown, that's okay. That's how you're going to learn. It's hard to believe by the sound of the falls, but the word judo actually means gentle way. For 66 years, Yoshishida has been coaching judo at San Jose State University, and the building behind me where the team trains was named in his honor back in 1997. And during the time that Yosh has coached judo, the Spartans have won an amazing 46 out of 52 national championships. At 92, Yoshishida is considered the father of judo in this country. Largely because of his early efforts, judo was recognized as a sport. He developed weight divisions, much like boxing or wrestling, and in 1964, judo became an official Olympic sport. Yoshida was born in Calexico, California in 1920, but his family soon returned to Japan. Four years later, the family came back to Southern California. My mother said we got on the last ship that left uh, Yokohama, and uh, that's uh, how we came here. We were farmers, and uh, we were very busy. As uh, soon as we got back from school, we would help on the farm. Summer time, if we had a holiday or anything, it, we were always uh, on the, working on the farm. Yoshida grew up in Garden Grove, California, in a largely Japanese-American community where he was first taught judo. Well, I was not that good. There were a lot of other uh, fellows that were my age, 10 years old, and they were good. They were very strong, but I, I stuck with it, whereas many of these other dropped out uh, earlier. Yoshida was successful in the sport as a youngster, but when he enrolled at San Jose State in 1940, he was a wrestler. However, when the judo coach went into the military, Yosh was recruited to take over the team. Wrestling didn't pay me anything, but uh, teaching judo did. I think I remember correctly, I got uh, $33 per month, which, which helped because I, I didn't have too much money to spend anyway. December 7, 1941. Life changed forever on December 7, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. The United States For people America in the Japanese American community, the outbreak of war would bring tragic consequences. The things that happened, we never expected, like uh, our parents being removed from the homes and everything confiscated. These are kind of things that we had never even dreamed of because uh, we thought we were all Americans. And this was our first time that we find out that we were not, to them, we were not Americans. We were the enemy. Yoshida was drafted into the U.S. Army and his parents were sent off to a relocation center. I thought that as soon as we got in, they found out we were Japanese Americans, that we would be discharged, but uh, that didn't go that way. Yoshida spent his time in the military as a lab tech in Wyoming, while his parents were confined behind barbed wire at the Poston War Relocation Center. Ultimately, Yoshida's parents returned to Garden Grove after the war, but they had lost everything. My dad uh, left it with some people that were neighbors, but uh, when we got not, nothing was there. Yoshida returned to San Jose State in 1946, and he would go on to earn his degree. He also taught self-defense classes in judo. Some of his students were former Marines and soldiers that had fought in the war, and they were initially not very impressed with the 130-pound instructor. So one of them come up and said, what are you gonna do now? I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw you. He was unbalanced to a point where he, he, he maybe had only about two or three units of strength, and I was still, as I came down, I was balanced, and I just slammed him. And so I turned around to my class and said, this is judo. And so that's how judo got started in San Jose State. Under Yoshida's leadership, the judo team thrived, and year after year, they have continued to win championships. We formed the National Collegiate Judo Association, and once we formed that, our team 
started to travel. And as time went on, we were able to develop real good players. And these players were able, able to compete on an equal basis with almost everybody. Yoshida also became the driving force for judo to become an Olympic sport. In 1964 at the Tokyo Games, he entered the arena as America's first Olympic judo head coach. Representing the United States was a great honor because when you sort of get kicked around and uh, now, now you're on top as a, as a coach representing the country. And then in Japan, they said, wow, they have a, they have a Japanese American uh, judo coach. That's really amazing. That memory is still treasured by the 92-year-old coach. You know, when you land in Tokyo, it's a very emotional kind of thing. You just feel, wow, I'm in my, uh, a, a country that my parents left to seek their dreams in America, and now I'm back in their, their country. Counting coaches, team managers, and judo players, there have been 18 Olympians over the years from San Jose State. Marty Malloy is the latest Spartan to be selected to the 2012 USA Olympic team. To make an Olympic team under Mr. Uchida is, for me, it makes me really, really proud, especially because, I mean, Mr. Uchida has such a huge history with the Olympic Games. It's uh, really good to see uh, people like Marty Malloy. She came from San Jose State and uh, just dropped in to see what kind of program we had. And then she decided that she wanted to uh, join us. She just went out and got a couple of jobs as a waitress. And uh, when she graduated, not only was she, did she make the Olympic team, but she, she made the dean's list, which I'm very proud of. Yosha's work ethic and philosophy has resonated at San Jose State since 1946, and it has never wavered. When you get into this cold, cruel world, you have to be strong. And this is where you're going to become strong. And uh, our students have done very well, and I'm proud of every one of them. And of course, it's all been accomplished in Yoshishida's gentle way. Ah!